Clickbait! Hi Lied! I cannot tell you all you need to know about selectors in one video, no matter how long the video would be. Nobody can. If they claim they can, they are also lying. And the reason for that is simple. Selectors are probably one of the most complex topics in RPA and mastering them is an art learned by spending sometimes hours trying to find the best selector in real life situations and not something one can teach you in one video. But that being said, I will try my best in this video to give you all the information you need to understand what selectors are and how they function, understand how we can modify them and make them independent of our development environment like our machine and our user, and finally learn some more advanced features like dynamic selectors and using the UI Explorer this way you can keep on practicing and slowly start to master selectors. When we create our automations, we have to interact with web pages, application user interfaces, and their buttons, lists, texts, and images. We cannot rely just on their position on screen, so we have to find something unique to them, and these are the selectors. Selectors are usually generated by Studio, but most of the times, to make them reliable and independent of our user and machine and browser and so on, we have to understand how they work and adjust them. A selector is formed by a series of nodes. The first one is the root node, and the last one is where our element finds itself. Web pages and most apps are developed having a pretty deep hierarchy of nodes or containers. Our task is to find something in this hierarchy of nodes that makes the respective element unique. Now each node has the following format. A UI system, then a first attribute, name and its value, a second one, and so on. And it starts with a user interface system, like a window or HTML page, web control and so on. And there is a complete list in the documentation. So we have the supported tags and attributes. We have window here, HTML, web control, control, UIA, Java, SAP, Silverlight. And there's also a list of attributes which are available for each of these tags. Now let's see them in practice. Let's open Yahoo Finance with Chrome and let's click on the search input field. So we have a click activity, we will click on indicate on screen, and we will click on the search field. Studio has now built in the background the selector for this click. And we can view it by clicking on the three lines here and clicking on edit selector. And we see now what the selector looks like. Now we have here some options already. We have some buttons up here. We can validate to see if our selector is correct, especially after we make some changes to it. We can indicate again the element or another element to generate a new selector. And we can also highlight the selection, the element behind the selector, just to make sure that um, it will click the expected one. And we can also uh, click or unclick the checkboxes, the different nodes or levels of the selector, and omit or allow some of the information in our selector. And we can also modify directly here in the selector editor our values. For example, something like this, and we can validate that again. Now, there is a UI Explorer button here, and this will open a new tool or window for the selector and allow us to view the structure of the application with all the nodes behind it. I have a full video on this feature, so I'll not go through it now, but please make sure not to miss it. I believe UI Explorer is one of the core tools we have to understand and use to really get to master selectors.
let's close it now. Now let's try a few stock tickers and watch what happens to the title. So we can click, for example, on this stock ticker and the title changes to the stock ticker, to some numbers and then Dow Futures Yahoo Finance. Let's go back, let's click on the next one and the title changes to the new figures and new stock ticker but in the end it has also Yahoo Finance. So if our automation has to go through several of these pages, we have to make the selector stock ticker agnostic. For that we can use wildcards. Wildcards are replacing zero or more characters in a string. And an asterisk replaces zero or more characters. A question mark replaces a single character. And while asterisk is quite well known by everybody, um, the question mark can be quite useful in some cases where we want to make sure that we are only replacing a limited number of characters and not a whole string of any length. In SAP, for example, you will have to edit almost every selector and use an asterisk for the title of the window, which usually contains either the system number or the username, which are specific to you while you develop the automation, but not to the user of the productive system in which it will end up running. And to quickly see how we can apply that, let's go back to one of our stock tickers. Let's indicate on screen for our click and select the search field and then edit selector. And we have here our title. So we can replace the first part, for example, with an asterisk. We can validate and uh, we can still find our field here. So it's fine. Another distinction we have to understand when it comes to selectors is that of a full selector versus partial selector. A full selector contains all the elements required to identify a new UI element. It's basically what we have seen so far. But sometimes it makes sense to use something called a partial selector. This selector is missing just the information about the top level window. This is the case, for example, if we use something like a Tech Browser. So let's do that. Let's switch to our Yahoo Finance page and let's use an Tech Browser activity. We will indicate on screen and select the browser with the currently open tab. And then we can also click on the same search field and have a look at the selector. And we notice that now the title node is also grayed out because the tab or the browser selector is already specified by the parent node here and therefore cannot be edited by the partial selectors coming under this umbrella activity. So if we need to adjust the title, for example, we have to do it in the attach browser activity. We put an asterisk, for example. And then that would be reflected in all the partial selectors coming afterwards. Now, the next important concept for selectors is that of dynamic selectors or using variables in selectors. So let's go back to our Yahoo Finance page and we have three recently views stock tickers here on the right hand side. Let's use a click or let's reuse the click we have here and indicate on screen. Let's indicate the first one and have a look at its selector. We have the AA name NVDA. Let's click on the next one. The selector looks quite the same except the AAA, the AA name again. So that will call and tag A. Let's look at the third one. Again, same selector except the AA name. So what if we wanted to click 
in our application, in our automation, on different stock tickers on screen based on the value of some internal variable. For that, we can define this variable. So let's use an assign. Let's press Ctrl K to define it. Let's say it's string stock ticker and we give it the value NVDA to start with. And then let's have or let's modify our click activity. Let's move it afterwards. Let's edit selector. And now we can select the text or the value of our attribute here. And if we right click, we can use a variable and we can select here our string stock ticker and confirm. All right, let's validate. And our selector does not validate for now. Let's click OK. And let's open our variable and assign it a default value of NVDA. Let's edit our selector again. And this time it validates. So basically, a studio needs to have a default value for the variable just to know what to replace it with, as an example, and search for that element in the Yahoo Finance page. And if we gave one existing stock ticker as a default value, it found it. We can also highlight it, and there it is. And now, if we want to select something else from our page, let's choose the ym equal f one. We can just change our value here. And then edit selector, it validates, highlight, and we see that it highlights the wrong one just because it it just checks the default one, but that's fine. To be sure that we are actually selecting the right one, we can just run this. And we see that we have clicked on the right stock ticker. So when you are using variables in selectors, don't be scared if um, sometimes it doesn't validate or if you highlight and it indicates the wrong element, that's only based on what default values you have defined for your variable. But if you run automation, it will click on the right one based on your variable value. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the best tools to analyze and build selectors in your path is the UI Explorer. That's a whole topic in itself, so I will not cover it here, but please make time to view the separate YouTube video on this topic. You can find the link in the upper right corner of the screen and in the description below. I hope the pointers mentioned so far, together with the UI Explorer video, will help you get a better understanding and command of selectors in your path. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. This will keep you informed when I post new videos and will also help the channel grow and be promoted to new people and it will reward my efforts in the same time. Thank you for watching and have a great day.